I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the Mazda 3. This fourth generation BP Mazda 3 launched here in Australia in 2019, which is scarily three years ago. And the vehicle has come in for a bit of a midlife update now in 2022 mainly through the addition of this new variant, which is called the Evolve SP. Like other models in Mazda's lineup, there's now an SP variant, which looks a little bit sportier inside and out. And you can see those changes on this polymetal gray hatch in the black 18 inch wheels, the black detailing at the front there, and also some cool red stitching inside. Plus you get the G25 engine, which is the bigger of the engines here in Australia, a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated petrol four cylinder engine. Now, as it sits, this car is just over $32,000. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about whether the Evolve SP is the best choice of Mazda 3 for most people, or if there's another variant you should look to as well. But before we get started, I'm gonna tell you the three things I like best about this car, the three things I don't like so much, and I'm gonna plug the subscribe button down below the video. One of the best things about the Mazda 3 is the price. The Evolve SP is a well-equipped variant, but it's 32,290, which in today's market is actually not bad. Add $495 for the polymetal gray paint and $202 for the floor mats, and you still come out at just under 33 grand before on-road costs. Now, almost everybody wants an SUV these days, but if you want a CX-30 Evolve, you'll be paying about 15% more and you have to accept the smaller two liter mild hybrid engine rather than the 2.5 here. The Mazda 3's ride is pretty firm, particularly the hatchback and particularly here at the front end. If you drive on pretty pockmarked and horrible roads, you'll really wanna test drive this car carefully to check that it's gonna be comfortable enough. Interestingly, the high speed ride is excellent. While the Evolve SP gets the big block 2.5 liter engine in the Mazda 3, sadly, Australia still doesn't get the turbocharged version of this car that you can buy in the US and other markets. And that would see the 139 kilowatt outputs boosted up to more than 170 kilowatts and torque would hit 420 newton meters, which would be more than useful in this vehicle. Personally, I like the styling of the BP series Mazda 3. The sedan is very handsome. The hatch is really quite avant-garde and has so few character lines, but that means that it's very color sensitive. Polymetal gray looks okay in my opinion, but my favorite colors for the new Mazda 3 are deep crystal blue, which is like a navy, and machine gray, which is super deep. If you go for the Mazda 3 hatchback, you get a small boot. 295 liters is almost laughable compared to some competitors, but as we'll find out with the Chasing Cars soccer ball test, everything is not as it seems. And in actual fact, if you pack carefully, you can get most of your stuff in here. The Mazda 3 has the best interior in the small car class. It feels much more expensive than $32,000 in this car with soft touch materials everywhere and comfortable cloth seats that actually have full power adjustment for the driver, which I love. The first thing you notice when you climb down into the Mazda 3 is just how nice this interior is for a mainstream vehicle. It's not a luxury car, but it has a nicer interior than many cars double the price. And it's more than just skin deep actually, because this is a comfortable car to sit in for many hours at a time. The seats are good and quality really seems to be there. In some of the early BP Mazda 3s we tested, we did hear a bit of creaking Absolutely not the case in this car. Uh, so perhaps there have been some quality improvements over the few years that these vehicles have been coming down the production line. But I mean, just in terms of what you see and what you touch every day, from this really nice thin leather steering wheel to the soft padding up here on the dash and on the doors, the cloth inserts, even plush padding down here where your knee naturally falls if you've got long legs, it's all really, really good. Jump in this and then go and sit in a Golf or even something like a base model Mercedes A-Class and you will see the difference and you'll see that the Mazda is actually nicer. Not sponsored, just cred to Mazda for getting this so right. Now, looking beyond the material quality, what have we got in the Evolve SP? Well, we have these supportive, comfortable, cloth upholstered seats. They get red stitching in the Evolve SP. You also get red up here on the dash, although not on the steering wheel, which is... I guess a bit of a disappointment, but still it looks really cool. And the driver's seat actually gets power adjustment, including power lumbar and under thigh support. So kind of premium level adjustments there for the driver. So I've been really comfy 
uh, behind the wheel of this Mazda 3. Up here on the dash, we have an 8.8-inch screen, which is not a touchscreen, which is probably good because it's too far away to touch anyway. So you drive it through the MZD Connect controller down here between the seats. I like that. I like a rotary dial. I know some people prefer touchscreens. That's fine. But on our bumpy roads, this is easy and consistent to control. We don't have the Bose stereo at this level that you do get higher up in the range, but the standard unit sounds pretty good. Really clear trebles, but it just loses kind of the thumping bass from the Bose unit, which I think I would probably prefer. Looking forward, we've got a mix of analog gauges and a digital screen in the center. You can't do cool things like put a map there like you can on a Golf or an Audi A3, but it's still a good looking unit, I suppose. And we also have decent storage. So we've got two cup holders here, a space ahead of the shifter, a sliding armrest with a decent box underneath it, two USB ports and a 12 volt socket, and space for a medium sized water bottle in the doors, although not a large water bottle in this particular car. What are we missing? USB-C connectivity for faster charging, and we're actually missing wireless smartphone charging too, and a sunroof, which you do get on higher cars in the Mazda 3 lineup. But at $32,000, I'm not really complaining, and you can actually save a grand on that by going for a six-speed manual. In fact, you can get a manual on every trim of the Mazda 3. That's the front seat, let's check out the back. The Mazda 3 hatch is pretty compact, but as you can see with me in the second row, it's totally fine for carrying four adults. A fifth would be a squeeze, but I'm comfortable back here, and I'm six foot. Legroom behind my own driving position is good, plus we've got a sculpted cutout as well. Tow room is is average but I could live with it and headroom is actually fine I've got another inch or so above me and beneath this black headliner that is quite chic and in terms of amenities back here we're well stocked we've got air vents we only have one map pocket but I guess that's enough for your uh, UBD we've got an armrest here with two cup holders nice and comfortable and we've had a bit of a material upgrade in the back of the Mazda 3 it now has rear soft touch plastics I know not everyone cares as much as I do about soft touch plastics, but the only other small car I can think of that has these is the i30. The Golf doesn't, the Corolla certainly doesn't. This is refined and nice, soaking up light, noise, and just something nice to rest your arm on that isn't rock hard in the back of the car. So that's pretty cool, plus extra space for another water bottle in the doors. When it comes to fitting child seats, the Mazda 3 might not be the first car that comes to mind, but hey, if this is the car that you own and you actually do have two small children and you need to carry them around in it, it's actually more than doable. Fitting child seats to this vehicle isn't that difficult. It's easier than uh, I found it on some SUVs, actually. That's largely down to smart positioning of the Isofix points, so it's not really fiddly. It is easy to get the top tether over the back of the seat and into the back get them tightened up, and there is enough room in there. The only compromise is that the middle seat becomes unusable for an adult. I can't even squeeze myself in there at all. And the front passenger seat, which we'll show you now, definitely does have to be pushed forward by probably five to 10 centimeters from where it would comfortably be. I can fit in the front passenger seat, but it does feel a little bit too close to the dashboard for comfort. One of the things that Mazda does really well with the Mazda 3 here in Australia is that every trim is available in both a hatchback, as you see it here, and in a practical four-door sedan, and you can choose an automatic or a manual on every single car. Now, speaking of the hatchback, it probably has the more interesting styling of the pair, although I personally really do like the sedan. Polymetal grey really does emphasise the curvy design of this car, and I love the tail light design, which is really three dimensional and has this cool, almost 50s Americana sort of circular look. We've got an integrated release for the manual tailgate in the badge, and that opens to reveal the hatchback's 295 litre boot, which is certainly on the small size for the class and requires some rather intelligent packing. Now, as you can see, we've got all of our AV gear in here, no issue today. Underneath that boot floor, there is a space saver spare and you get a hardy cargo blind that lifts up when you open up the tailgate, a bit like a CX-5. But how many balls can you get into the boot? Well, we conducted our soccer ball test indoors for this video. Dealing with this many balls in the rain isn't much fun. So we've done the ball test in the Chasing Cars HQ basement. Now, the Mazda 3 hatchback, it did get kind of panned in terms of practicality when this generation came out for its small 295 litre boot. But it is actually quite deep. Underneath that boot floor, there's a space to have a spare, and we were able to get 30 of the Chasing Cars soccer balls into the back of this hatchback, which isn't too bad, but kind of corresponding small and mid-sized SUVs are usually able to get around that 40 ball mark. 
So what's it gonna cost you to run a Mazda 3 Evolve SP? Well, going for the G25 engine means that servicing over the first five years is gonna total $1,874. But keep in mind that unlike some rivals, the Mazda 3 requires scheduled maintenance every year or 10,000 kilometers, which is a bit less convenient than cars like the Toyota Corolla or the Volkswagen Golf that let you go out to 15,000 Ks between services. When it comes to insurance, in the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer spent $962 to comprehensively insure a new Mazda 3. Everybody's situation varies and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account, like where you live, who drives the car, and how the car is garaged. Fuel consumption in the Mazda 3 is okay, but not class leading. Mazda claims 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers combined for the G25 Evolve SP, but in our testing, we've only managed to get about 8.5 liters per 100 Ks. However, in this car's defense, we have been running it in. More on that later. And the last thing with the warranty on the vehicle, that is five years of unlimited kilometers on this car, like on every new Mazda sold in Australia. All right, so what is the Mazda 3 Evolve SP like to drive? Well. I've actually brought this car to a pretty good road. Uh, Alec and me are out scouting for locations today. The Mazda 3 has been our partner for the trip and it's been really good to drive because actually high speed driving on country roads and on the highway is one of the things the Mazda 3 does best. I mean, some people would definitely think of this car as a city car, which it sort of is. And it's pretty firm and focused and sporty uh, in the city. Uh, whereas actually when you build up the speed a bit, the suspension suddenly all makes sense and this car is a real pleasure to kind of bowl along an Australian country road in. But I'll come back to the ride and handling. First of all let's talk about the engines uh, because what was once a relatively um, simple lineup of Mazda 3 engines is a bit more complicated now. In fact the one we're driving is the least complicated of the lot and the one that will suit most people. This is what Mazda calls the G25. It's a 2.5 litre high compression naturally aspirated petrol four-cylinder engine that makes 139 kilowatts of power and 252 newton meters of torque. Solid numbers, particularly power, and you can really tell when you're exploring this car's zesty red line region that it's got quite a turn of speed to it, but you do have to rev it out to get the best of this motor, and that's because it's non-turbo. However, because the compression ratio is pretty high, not as high as it could be if Australia had better quality petrol, but still really high compared to most uh, petrol engines, it, it makes peak torque pretty low. Uh, by 4,000 RPM, you're making 252 newton meters of torque, and so it feels strong enough in the mid-range, definitely enough for a light car. Uh, 1,293 kilos with fluids is the score we got when we weighed the Mazda 3 on our scales. But the G25 might be the best engine for most, but it's not the only engine. There's also a two liter mild hybrid version of this engine which uh, makes about 110 kilowatts of power and mild hybrid really does mean mild. It's really, a, it's a 24 volt mild hybrid system. It's extended start stop. Um, it's not like a Mercedes mild hybrid which adds 250 newton meters of torque to the engine. Um, but it will save you a little bit more fuel of what the G20 engine was using before that change. And then there's also an X20, which is Mazda's Skyactiv-X X engine. Really innovative technology, combines some diesel tech with petrol tech. But we have found in our testing of the Skyactiv-X, which is only available on the top spec Mazda 3, that it doesn't really save quite enough fuel to justify the additional expense. So for people that love engine technology, and are interested in spark controlled compression ignition, then the X20 could be fascinating, particularly if you can get a deal on that car, but I think the G25 ends up being the motor that will suit most. Sadly, the Mazda 3 Turbo, which uses the CX-9 engine in a Mazda 3, is not available in Australia, unlike the US and a bunch of other markets. That engine would make between 170 and 190 kilowatts of power, 420 newton meters of torque, and you get all drive. In Australia, all Mazda 3s are front wheel drive, but you do get a choice of transmission, a six speed automatic, as this car has here, that costs $1,000, uh, or the six speed manual, which is in effect $1,000 less. These cars really suit the manual. Very few people choose them, and that means the option will go away in the next few years, we reckon. So if you can drive a manual, if you love a great manual, and Mazda really do a fantastic one, 
please order a Mazda 3 manual. Now, back to the ride and handling, which is one of this car's strong points, particularly the handling. You get really lovely, crisp, direct, quick steering, which has heaps of fizz and feel for an electric power steering rack, much more than most of this car's competition which means avoiding huge holes on a country road like the one we just went over is quite easy because you know exactly what the front end of the car is doing. But there's also engagement from the rear end. Now the Mazda 3 has a torsion beam rear suspension, but it's kind of like a Peugeot style torsion beam, not a base I-30 torsion beam. So you really can get the rear end of the car moving and engaging in the corners. In fact, this vehicle is nice and light, certainly helps, but under a bit of trail braking, you can have that rear end shimmying around if that's your kind of thing but if you don't really find the limits of your small car driving this car just sedately still reveals the fact that it's a nice engaging driver focused product with good handling controlled body roll uh, yeah body control and compliance is generally good although urban compliance over harsh square edged bumps can be a bit average and i think anyone would call the suspension tuning firm at the front end of this car the sedan actually dials it back a little bit, so if you want the Mazda 3 but something a bit more comfortable, check out the sedan version of this car. On the whole though, you do get used to it quickly and it's quite livable and you're rewarded with great control at higher speeds. Refinement is better than a Mazda 3 has ever been. We're on course chip at 100 right now and it's still relatively quiet in the car, so that's certainly a high point. Visibility is okay, though that bulky C-pillar does cause a bit of an issue when you're looking over your shoulder. But the safety technology in this car is pretty decent and the tuning has improved over the life of this generation Mazda 3. The adaptive cruise control is fairly smart, although we timed it at four seconds to start accelerating once a car in front of us had moved out of the way, which is a bit slow. The lane keep assist works pretty well and the blind spot monitoring is good too. The reversing camera is also much higher resolution than some rivals, meaning you can actually see what's behind you, though the rain does interfere with the view of the camera. So those are my detailed impressions of the 2022 Mazda 3, specifically seen here in G25 Evolve SP automatic hatchback form. There's a lot to like with the Mazda 3. It has the best interior of the segment. I like the styling and the price compared to an equivalent SUV is very attractive. So don't count out buying a traditional small car instead of a crossover if you want something high quality and you also wanna save a bit of cash too. But with the Mazda 3, particularly with the hatch, make sure you test drive it to check that you can live with the urban ride, which is a little bit firm and probably should be dialed back by Mazda in a future update, I reckon. Those are my opinions. Let me know yours down below the video in the comments. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.